I'm Aria Schwartz, along with Rachel Galligan, and welcome to the Windsider Show, where it's all about the W, the Connecticut Sun. What's their roster situation, and what are the situations that they're facing this offseason? Let's dive in. If you like our show, please consider joining our Patreon community, patreon.com backslash Winsider. For less than a cup of coffee a month, you can directly show support for the hard work we do covering the W. And don't forget to see our amazing staff's written content over at winsider.com. That's winsider.com. Remember, downloading the episode makes our stats look better and allows us to continue doing this important work. Want to sponsor an episode or something else regarding Winsider? Email us, info at winsider.com. All right, moving on down the list of the teams, the Connecticut Sun, not the most interesting, a pretty easy episode for our listeners, Um, easy to track. Rachel, you ready? Let's do it. I'm ready. All right, rolling down the list of who is actively on the roster right now, including training camp contracts, Dewana Bonner, Alyssa Thomas, Jasmine Thomas, Brianna Jones, Natisha Heideman, Kyla Charles, Dijanae Carrington, and Beatrix Mont Premier. Now... This is where it's a very interesting one because one of the biggest names in the league, John Quill Jones, last year's MVP is a free agent. Now they have a a, a nice amount of money left in uh, their cap space, but this is where it gets interesting because Natisha Heidemann's training camp contract and Mont Premier's training camp contract do not count towards that 500K left over. So realistically, you're looking more so at a three something left over. Right, because if you add Natisha and Mont Premier's contract, that makes twelve hundred, thirteen hundred. I apologize. Um, at thirteen hundred k minus the five hundred k, so we're talking about you know less than four hundred k to sign. Realistically, thought wise, Brian January and John Quill Jones. So we're sitting there and we're going, okay, how how is this all going to work? Right? How are they going? to bring back this team. And to me, it's the pitch is easy for JJ, right? It's with like, as I say, in all these episodes, players move for money or rings. JJ doesn't have a ring yet. This team can offer both. This team can say, Hey, we are the number one team. We got a lot of, a little messed up because Alyssa Thomas joined us late, but now we can have her for the whole season. Knock, knock, knock on wood that none of their players who are superstars overseas get injured. We hate that. Um, But they can basically say, like, how many other teams can offer you a nice paycheck and make you an MVP for another year and offer you a ring? Not many other teams. The question then in my mind becomes, because if I'm Kurt Miller, I'm throwing the whole piggy bank at John Quell Jones, and then you have a little less money for January. Mm -hmm. Yep. Does January try and take a bigger paycheck, go somewhere else? Does Connecticut say... You know, we don't want to run it back. If I'm Connecticut, I am happy running it back, right? Um, But I'm curious your thoughts on this team. I know you got your ear to the ground, ear to the pulse on this team. Like, what? end of the day, I feel like it's not a crazy thought. You know, last year, this team played with like eight people half the season, 10 people half the season, whatever it was, because they had to eat Alyssa Thomas's contract. But, you know, talk to me about your thoughts on the, uh, the Connecticut Sun, Rachel. I mean, I think first and foremost, coring JJ, um, moving towards paying her the max. That's, I mean, come on. I mean, obvious. Um, But yeah, I mean, you know, I think an interesting fact is we have not really been able to see Connecticut test their full on vision of seeing Duana Bonner, Alyssa Thomas, and John Cole Jones. Um, They've played together two regular season games over the last two seasons, which which is a crazy fact uh, to think about. Um, So being able, like you said, knock on wood to see that big three together, healthy and consistently playing. Um, we know Connecticut <laughs> is going to be in contention and, 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 and right there knocking on that door for their moment, assuming they can bring, you know, core John Quill Jones. Um, but yeah, like, so then that poses the question of the two guard, you know, do you have JJ maybe unselfishly negotiate to take a bit less than the max so that Connecticut could attract a higher level starting two guard, AKA potentially 
return January. I love January on Connecticut's roster. You know, I mean, her professionalism and her on-ball defense. I mean, it, she she exemplifies and everything that Connecticut is about, in my opinion. And it, 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 I would be really sad, <clears throat> excuse me, if she does not return to Connecticut. But I think it's going to be really difficult for Connecticut to compete if others are throwing decent money at her. And I, and I suspect that they will. So, you know, it's it's kind of like when we were talking about Chicago Sky, our, our – you know, when, when you're talking about contention teams and teams that are, are really going after a championship, who is willing to give and take a little bit in order to kind of keep this core together? And, 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 if, and if you lose out on January, OK, well, then that that opens up the question of, OK, well, it is attractive for someone to go to Connecticut, um, in my opinion, because you got an opportunity to go in as a starter right away and maybe even take a little bit less money. But you're going in as as a starter and you're on a contender. So I think, you know, first and foremost, securing JJ and finding a way to bring back January has got to be um, the most ideal situation for Connecticut. Now, if you can't bring January back and JJ does sign for the max, okay, what other guards out there, two guards, could fit that position that fit well with kind of what Connecticut is doing. And I think it would be appealing. I mean, I absolutely do. People who are looking for a championship and an an opportunity to step in and impact right away, that's huge. I mean, there's a lot of players I can look at on the guard and wings list uh, on, shameless plug, winsider.com, free agency tracker slash off-season tracker. I mean, you look at it and I agree. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world if you lose January. January is a player that I agree with you with everything you said embodies the Connecticut they were so disjointed without her (laughs) in the playoffs I I mean they were just they were disjointed in the playoffs at all regardless I mean things were just 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 out of she did miss a big shot true true which which like is too much I'm not gonna say like you drop a player because that big shot what I'm saying is like end of the day JJ is the queen sure right she's she's the player you need end of but end of the day here's my thing when I look at this team and I look at their roster, I go, okay, Duana Bonner, if you need a shot, she can get her shot in, but she's not going to like, you know, create so much, right? Same with Jasmine Thomas. She's good as, as we've well noted. She's going to have one really good playoff game during every season. Alyssa Thomas eventually is going to go cold. We've seen it every playoffs. Um, JJ, are they going to be finally in that comfort level where they give her, I, I don't even know how to properly word this. So take this without any salt or, or any negativity. Are they going to have the confidence in her to when it, when the team, you know, is in a tough situation to finally just say, we're giving the ball to our MVP. She's the MVP. We're giving her the ball and she's going to carry us through this. We see that with many other teams, but throughout this whole season, we really didn't see last season. I said, uh, excuse me. We really didn't see, in my opinion, enough of that where the team kind of started to spin its wheels and they continued to do what they did, which always caused success last season. But there was never truly that point of just feed the MVP, just give the ball to the MVP and let her work and she'll carry us out of this slump. And when she starts making shots, everyone else will. So in my mind, you bring back Jones. And then the serious conversation that Kurt Miller has to have with himself and his coaching staff is, is there a guard out there that I I don't think that there is a guard or a wing who is going to give you the same high level of defense that January is going to give you. And I don't think, but I do think that there is a guard out there who can give you better offense than January has been giving this team. Courtney Williams. Courtney Williams going back. (laughs) (laughs) Courtney Williams going back. No, that would be, first of all, I'll say this position wise, player wise, if they didn't have the falling out that, you know, off record, whatever you want to say that we've heard rumors about and whatnot and, and all that, then yeah, that would be a good fit. Honestly, other players I'm looking at Tiffany Hayes might be a pretty good fit, right? Um, Trying to think of who else on this. I mean, obviously Jewel Lloyd, but that's not a realistic one. Um, Odyssey Sims, Ricona Williams. Yeah. Odyssey Sims. Maybe. I don't know. Just throwing um, some names out there. Assuming, just throwing some names that I that, would not be mad about. Yeah. If Brown January, you know, 
ends up not. I, I, I've i got to believe January returns and wants to be a part of what they're doing. I mean, my God, that would be so hard to pass up. But I agree. We'll I agree. It's one of those situations, um, you know, but can somebody else entice them over? Mm-hmm. I have to think that it's one of those situations where this roster is pretty much going to be set as the same as last year because – in, unless something happens crazy with JJ, uh, even though I fully anticipate, not based on sources or anything like that, I'll, I'll you know I'm not talking to sources when it comes to this stuff. But I have to think that like this team runs it back. They're a really close team. They're a family. You know the question is more so, what will get them over the hump? Right, like that's the question that Kurt Miller is asking himself and the coaching staff. And and do they believe? That they would have gotten the reason they couldn't get over the hump last year was because of changing the equation so late in the season with Alyssa Thomas. Do they think that they just kind of burned out like two years ago when they um, lost to uh, when they lost to Vegas? Um, You know, what is the situation in their mind? Uh, You know, what do they believe? I think that this roster is phenomenally built. I love this team. I love the longevity. I love the consistency. I think that's why they've been so good. But you know how it is. Like, in order to win a championship, you also have to have a little bit of luck. And my God, if Connecticut has not faced some adversity from a health standpoint or, or, you know, just just players coming and going and some things going on. I mean, to, to play that entire season last year without Alyssa Thomas and then being thrown into the mix so late in the season, I mean, that's... Alyssa Thomas is such an important role and I'm not telling anybody anything they don't know. And so, I mean, now I'm looking at this team, looking at it and going, man, it, you've, you've kind of got a chance to test out this vision. Hopefully knock on wood that there's no major health, you know, concerns or, or, or major losses. So no, like if you can find any type of way to bring it back, bring back everyone healthy, and find a way to test out this vision consistently for the entire course of a season and see what you can do. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not saying this next part just in the sense of like playing devil's advocate. I'm saying it for that, but also because it has been a topic, a general idea that's been broached on social media that I feel like needs to be addressed. Does John Qual Jones say like, the connection between Kurt Miller and his, and his team and his roster is very close. That's obvious. Does John Quall Jones say it's pretty clear to me that Alyssa Thomas is the favorite and that she's always going to get the ball in those like late game situations? Or is it a situation where she doesn't feel that way? Because in my mind, that's the only thing that can sure. pull John Quell away. I think is, that does she feel that she's not the MVP to her head coach? I think that's a fair um, devil's advocate approach um, and question that could potentially, you know, I guess if there was anything, um, that's a very interesting take. I mean, it, it's also not ever going to be public, right? Like John Quell is an insanely nice person. So is Kurt. Neither of them are going to go public and say, this is why it happened. But I do think that it's a possibility of a behind the scenes thought process. I think, I think, it, I think it comes back down to like, okay, we, we, we've, we've established you as, you know, a top three player in this league. You're an MVP. Now it's about a ring, you know, and <laughs> that that's, that's got, I, I don't know this for sure, but I would imagine that has got to be the focus of nearly everybody on this roster. Totally. Well, thank you, Rachel. Any final thoughts before we log off for this episode? Nope, I'm good.